We know that transaction output contains a locking script and most common form of the locking script will lock the output to a Bitcoin address. We know that Bitcoin address is the hash of public key and this is the reason this type of locking script is called pay to public key hash or P2PKH. If an output is locked to your Bitcoin address, then it means that it is your fund and you can spend it. So when we say that Alice has transferred some Bitcoins to Bob, all it means is that Alice created an output transaction which has a locking script which locks this output to Bob's Bitcoin address. A typical P2PKH locking script will look like this. It has the Bitcoin address which is nothing but the hash of public key and it has some operations including an operation to verify the digital signature. We have seen in previous chapter that digital signature is verified using elliptic curve digital signature algorithm and for this verification you need the digital signature and the public key. This combination of digital signature and public key is what we call as unlocking script and you know that unlocking script is part of transaction input. So the unlocking script of transaction input is combined with the locking script of transaction output to form a combined validation script. The result of this validation script will be true only if unlocking script satisfies the conditions set by locking script. This script is evaluated using a stack data structure. You might be knowing that a stack is a very simple data structure which can be visualized as a stack of items. It uses two operations push and pop. Push adds an item on top of the stack and pop removes an item from top of the stack. It is called last in first out data structure because any operation is done only on the topmost item. So here is your combined validation script and we will push the item onto this stack and we will do the operation on topmost item when needed. So as our execution pointer is at the signature, we push this signature to the stack. Now the signature is the topmost item. Move the execution pointer to the next element and this is the public key of the signer. So we will push this public key to the top of the stack. Then move the pointer to the next element. This element is the duplicate operation. And as you know, we always do the operation on the topmost element of the stack. So we will duplicate this public key. Then move the pointer to the next element, which is a hash operation. So we will do the hash operation on the public key, which is the topmost element in the stack. So it becomes public key hash. Then move the pointer to the next element, which is Bitcoin address move this element to the stack then move the pointer to the next element this element is an operation which checks if the top two elements are equal if the result is true then this operation will remove these two elements remember that the topmost element is the bitcoin address present in the locking script and the second element is the hash of the public key present in the unlocking script Ideally, they should be same because if they are not same, then it means that the Bitcoin address in the locking script was generated from a different public key. So this transfer of fund should not happen. But if they are same, it means that the Bitcoin address in the locking script was generated from the same public key which is present in unlocking script. In this case, we will remove these two elements. Then move the pointer to the last element which verifies the digital signature with the help of public key pop these two elements and push the result to the stack. We have already discussed how digital signature verification happens in previous chapter. So in this way, unlocking script is used to unlock the locking script. If the result is true, then this unlocking was successful and the fund can be spent. So this is how pay to public key hash script works. As you can see in this script, there was only one signer. So the unlocking script was having only one digital signature and one public key. So in a way, this was single signature script. In next chapter, we will talk about multi-signature scripts, when we may need multi-signature and how multi-signature script works. Stay tuned to my code copy. If you now want to move to the next chapter, you can click on this card. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because so many interesting videos are on the way. For easy navigation to all chapters, visit mycodecoffee.com. Thank you so much for watching.